Hello, this is Tim. I'm here. Um, book two for June 2020. I'm in the basement, as you can see, which is fitting when I'm talking about black life because that's where we are. So I'm going to continue reading from Case for Reparations by ta Coates. Let's go. Clyde Ross was a smart child. His teacher thought he should attend a more challenging school. There was very little support for educating black people in Mississippi. But Julius Rosenwald, a part owner of Sears Roebuck, had begun an ambitious effort to build schools for black children throughout the South. Ross's teacher believed he should attend the local Ro Rosenwald school. It was too far for Ross to walk and get back in time to work in the fields. Local white children had a school bus. Clyde Ross did not, and thus lost the chance to better his education. Then, when Ross was 10 years old, a group of white men demanded his only childhood possession, the horse with the red coat. You can't have this horse. We want it, one of the white men said. They gave Ross's father $17. I did everything for that horse, Ross told me. Everything. And they took him. Put him on the racetrack. I never did know what happened to him after that, but I know they didn't bring him back. So that's just one of my losses. The losses mounted. As sharecroppers, the Ross family saw their wages treated as the landlord's slush fund. Landowners were supposed to split the profits from the cotton fields with sharecroppers, but bells would often disappear during the count, or the split might be altered on a whim. If cotton was selling for 15 cents a pound, the Ross family might get 15 cents or might get 15 cents or only five. I'm sorry, if the cotton was selling for 50 cents a pound, the Ross family might get 15 cents or only five cents. One year, Ross's mother promised to buy him a seven dollar suit for a summer program at their church. She ordered the suit by mail. But that year, Ross's family was paid only five cents a pound for cotton. The mailman arrived with the suit. The Rosses could not pay. The suit was sent back. Clyde Ross did not go to the church program. It was in these early years that Ross began to understand himself as an American. He did not live under the blind decree of justice, but under the heel of a regime that elevated armed robbery to a governing principle. He thought about fighting. Just be quiet, his father told him, because they'll come kill us all. Clyde Ross grew. He was drafted into the army. The draft officials offered him an exemption if he stayed home and worked. He preferred to take his chances with war. He was stationed in California. He found that he could go into stores without being bothered. He could walk the streets without being harassed. He could go into a restaurant and receive service. That's nice. <clears throat> Ross was shipped off to Guam. He fought in World War II to save the world from tyranny, but when he returned to Clarksdale, he found the tyranny had followed him home. This was 1947, eight years before Mississippi lynched Emmett Till and tossed his broken body into the Tallahatchie River. The Great Migration, a mass exodus of six million African Americans that spanned most of the 20th century, was now in its second wave. The black pilgrims did not journey north simply seeking better wages and work or bright lights and big adventures. They were fleeing the acquisition, the, acquis, the acquisitive warlords of the south. They were seeking the protection of the law. Clyde Ross was among them. He came to Chicago in 1947 and took a job as a taster at Campbell Soup. He made a stable wage. He married. He had children. His paycheck was his own. No Klansman stripped him of the vote when he walked down the street. He did not have to move because a white man was walking past. He did not have to take off his hat or avert his gaze. His journey from peonage to full citizenship <clears throat> seemed near complete. Only one item was missing, a home, the final badge of entry into the sacred order of the American middle class of the Eisenhower years. So. <clears throat> That's it for this reading. Until next time, I want to thank you and remember to take care of your mind, your body, and be safe.